and welcome to Stories of Scotland. I'm Jenny. And I'm Annie. And in this episode, we're going to be talking about a very sumptuous Scottish subject. That's right. We're going to be talking all things buttery. But not like sticks of butter or cute little buttercups. More like... The Aberdeen Buttery, also known as the Aberdeen Rowie or Morning Roll. The words are interchangeable, though a lot of people would argue with that. Urgh. So we'll have a blather about these rowies, and then we'll talk about fairies and bakeries, and I also found a splendid old hill walking account of going on a very long walk just to enjoy a buttery. Ah, the mysterious and mythical Aberdeen buttery. So here's the thing, Annie, I'm from the Central Belt, and I've lived in the Highlands for a few years now, and not once have I ever heard of a buttery until very recently. That's because butteries aren't from the Highlands, Jenny. They're from Aberdeen. Well, t- I'm from Glasgow, so anywhere above there is considered the Highlands to me. Well, luckily I'm here to correct you. While Aberdeen is in the north, it's not considered part of the Highlands. It's more commonly known as the North East. However, the city of Aberdeen and surrounding Aberdeenshire have very distinct cultural differences to the Highlands. And one of these incredible differences is the buttery. Slash the rowy. So people in the city... Tunis. ...call it a rowy, and people in the countryside... Tuchters. ...tend to call it a buttery. Oh, I love a little tuni tuchter rivalry. But which one claims ownership over the origin of the buttery? Well, the origin story of the buttery begins at sea. <laughs> well, sure, me timbers and call me a stowaway. I did not see that one coming, Annie. <laughs> Indeed, Jenny. <laughs> now, let me tell you the charming story of the birth of the buttery. Birds! Birds! <laughs> it's a buttery! So the origin story of the buttery is that a fisherman was really tired of eating ship's biscuits. So ships took dry, tasteless biscuits out to sea. Biscuits that had to last for weeks and were just very unappealing and incredibly bland. Mm. Now our story begins in around 1880, when a fisherman was so desperate to eat something other than this horrible biscuit that he went to a baker and asked for a delicious bread that could last for weeks at sea. It's a very big challenge. Now, the baker knew that normal bread would go mouldy quite quickly, and he wasn't sure how to preserve it so it could last for weeks at sea. Mm. So he asked his butcher next door for guidance, and the butcher suggested adding lard, so that's the fat rendered from meat, to the bread dough to make it last for longer, Mm. giving it a really high fat content. Now, the baker then spent a very long night experimenting with dough, butter and lard. And that's how the buttery was born. The fisherman tasted this and was absolutely thrilled and told all of his friends. And soon the buttery became a staple for all of the fisher folk in Aberdeen. And it was so tasty that it spread and became the standard breakfast of the working class folks in industrial Aberdeen and nowadays butteries can be found all along the Murray coast as well. Ah what a tale what a beautiful example of interdisciplinary teamwork and sharing of experience to create something completely new and very fresh for a very long time. Uh, It just goes to show what we can achieve when we all work together and help each other out Annie. It's funny because now butteries are best enjoyed straight out of the oven. Ah okay. And they are an extremely hardy, versatile and calorie-dense snack for all to enjoy, no matter where you're from or what you call it. So, quick question. Seeing as it has its roots in fishing and it's also called a rowie, is that because you row a boat? Um, No. (laughs) So I think the word rowie comes from rolling out the dough because the batteries begin with a bread dough Mm. and then become a wee bit like a pastry, I guess, by the time all of the lard is added. Ah. But our wee household has just eaten our weight in butteries, so how would you describe the taste of the rowie, Jenny? Um, eating a buttery slash rowie is, it's like eating a hardcore croissant. It's like someone got four croissants and then stacked them all up on top of each other and then 
in between each layer to hold the structural integrity of their croissant tower together, they just put a layer of like really thick butter and salt. And then just for a laugh, they thought, you know what, I'm bored of this tower of croissants I've built. And they went and they got their Encyclopedia Britannica and they just squished the whole tower all the way down with it uh, and real, real tight. And then they toasted it and then they put more butter on it and called it three quarters of a balanced diet. That's what it tastes like. I, I mean, I like to imagine it as a croissant with crushed dreams and a crushed body. <laughs> Do you remember your first buttery, Annie? Well, when I was a teenager, I worked in a bakery where we made butteries. Ah. And they were really popular. However, I didn't get them in my house very often. Um, I think because they're so rich, I mean, no one needs that many calories in one sitting. <laughs> well, that's for you to... You to say and me to decide, Annie. (laughs) (laughs) So Rowies have been around for a long time and in their rich buttery history, they've faced some real challenges. But what we found is that they're a slippery snack and you can't ban a buttery. No, you cannot. So during the First World War, the government introduced war bread a much less tasty type of bread that was designed to make flour go further by mixing it with different cereals or potato flour. And then, in May 1917, along came the bread order, and this brought in strict rules about how bread could be made. And one of the rules was that bread had to be at least 12 hours old to be sold. So basically, it was a fresh bread ban. Wait, why go after fresh bread? That seems weird. There were multiple reasons why they wanted to ban fresh bread. So the first reason was that the government believed that no one would want to eat stale bread, so people would still eat bread but they'd eat much less of it if they could not buy it fresh. But then also, women were now working in bakeries, it had traditionally been a man's rule, but all the men had to go to war. So bakers used to stay up all night cooking bread, but because the government believed women needed to look after children, they couldn't spend all night in the bakery. Mm. So it then had to be baked during the day. Okay. Okay, so how did the buttery fare through all of this? This turmoil in the bakers? Well, although they were designed for sailors, by the First World War, butteries were the most common breakfast item to be eaten fresh in Aberdeen, alongside a big bowl of porridge. And thus, this fresh bread ban meant that buttery tradition was doomed. (gasps) Bun, bun, bun! (laughs) Yes, it was very dramatic. However, bakers in Aberdeen argued that the buttery wasn't bread at all because it has ingredients that bread doesn't have, like butter and sugar and lard. Wow, (laughs) especially a cake. (laughs) They managed to get away with this for a few months. However, the food controller eventually caught on and banned the buttery. No, we must rise up! That is almost what the people of Aberdeen said. They argued that the buttery was a crucial part of the Aberdeen breakfast, which consists of porridge, milk, a wee cup of tea and a buttery. Now this was the breakfast of the working classes and Aberdeen was a key industrial harbour. These were the people who were keeping the war effort going Mm. and they were complaining that they couldn't have a good breakfast because the butteries were banned. Mm -hmm. Now, there was such outrage about the banning of the buttery that the newspapers suggested that the workers' unions should get involved to petition the food controller. Yeah, get them! An Aberdeenshire newspaper even called for Home Rule for Scotland (laughs) over the buttery ban, claiming that it was a grave injustice and that the British government must have an ignorance of Scotland's national dietary requirements. Oh, that is brilliant. I wonder what their tagline was. Butteries, not Britain. <laughs> they may take our butteries, but we'll take our independence. Thank you very much. Going to not ban that. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, this movement never took off, Jenny. Probably kept slipping in all the butter about. And all the lard. <laughs> so this meant that on the 22nd September 1917, the people of Aberdeen went to the bakers for their final fresh butteries. But, Annie, so here's my one question with this whole thing is that butteries are meant to last for two weeks at sea. What is, what is an extra 12 hours going to do? Like, why are people so upset about this? Well, the buttery had grown and grown in popularity. 
and it was no longer just sailors that wanted to eat them. And while they are edible two weeks after they are made, they're much better fresh just out the oven. And it had become a habit for people of Aberdeen, part of their delicious morning ritual, to go and get a fresh, hot buttery. Ah, okay, right. So what happened to this buttery ban? The fresh bread van wasn't lifted until after the First World War ended. However, a baker actually appeared in court in 1919 for selling buttery. Yes. He claimed that he had accidentally mixed his freshly baked butteries with his butteries that were a day old, and thus illicit butteries had <sighs> slipped into the legal batch. And he was fined 10 shillings. What? But he said it was an accident. Mm-hmm. And then... Mm-hmm. Can you see the judge going... Mm-hmm. <laughs> a different Aberdeenshire baker was fined 20 shillings because he had been caught intentionally selling fresh batteries. These are the kind of things that I love our podcast for, Annie. These law-breaking bakers taking the life of the humble buttery into their own flowery hands and standing up and kneading out for what is right. A fresh butter in the morning keeps the harbour afloat, am I right? Well, their quiet defiance won out, as in August 1919, the fresh bread ban was itself banned. It was revoked, and people across Aberdeen celebrated by having fresh butteries for breakfast again. Oh, thank the slippery, lardy, flaky, buttery gods of Aberdeenshire. So I find this wee scribble about going hillwalking and gobbling down a buttery. It was published in the Aberdeen Weekly Journal on Thursday 30th of October 1941. Jenny, would you? A week or two ago I was standing on a bracet road in the country when a nostalgia swept over me, an utter craving for the high hills under a spacious firmament. This longing for the open air in the hills comes more frequently nowadays than it used to. Perhaps the blackout is responsible. With its long heather, its carpet of deep lovely mosses, its numerous hags and its casual water, Benachy is not an easy hill to walk over. The Tapo North, nothing like so interesting to climb or to be on, is a paradise to feet with its firm surface and short crisp heather. From Turf Hill to Bruntwood Tap is three miles of hard plugging and high stepping. By the time I reached the foot of the rocks or the mither tap, I must have walked a dozen difficult miles without a pause on a breakfast of porridge and a buttery rowey. There was a gale blowing, I was tired and cold and hungry, and it took me some effort of will to postpone my lunch until I reached the summit. I didn't stay more than a few seconds there. If I hadn't a walked off, I should have been blown off. It was a good day. Not only for the physical exertion and the joy of seeing the glorious display of mosses for which Benachy deserves to be famous. The cushions were a score of shades from a fresh pale green through primrose yellow to old rose, scarlet, crimson and even maroon. So I really enjoyed this wee story because it's it's more about a walk than about the buttery. Mm. But it shows perfectly the situation in which you should be eating a buttery, and that's when you're doing excessive exercise, (laughs) because butteries are incredibly calorie-heavy snacks. Well, he says he walked 12 hard miles on nothing but eating the buttery and porridge, so that just shows you how much energy is in the buttery. It got him 12 miles before he was like, oh, I'm a bit hungry now. (laughs) (laughs) So we all know that many bakers are plagued by fairies. Yes, we do. Because there's nothing fairies enjoy more than freshly baked treats. Mm. And I found this wee bite of folklore (laughs) from the Celtic Review in 1923, which is all about the dangers of baking when fairies are nearby. Now, while a lot of fairies in Scotland are known to live in small mounds or fairy hills, there are also a whole magical host who live underground in subterranean dwellings tucked away below our feet. 
Now, occasionally it so happens that some humans will come along and decide that the view from this spot is lovely and plonk a house down on top of it. At a wee cottage in Airlie, for for sure, the family was terrified of a ghost. Every day they would prepare fresh oat cakes to eat and bake them on the hearth. The smell was lovely and warm and apparently so wholesome that it drew their ghosty out of the world of the dead and into the world of their oat cakes. As soon as they turned away from the hearth, boom, a cake was gone, just like that. Now, having a ghost nicking your oat cakes is not something you want. The family turned their whole house upside down looking for the hungry haunting, and they grew so scared and exasperated that they tore the whole cottage down, for there was well-fed evil in there, Annie, and they were having none of that. <laughs> Now, as the house lay in piles of rubble, someone noticed that the only thing sitting untouched was the hearth, upon which the very oat cakes would bake. And upon investigation, they found that if only they'd checked under the hearth, their problem would have been solved immediately. For the hearth was built upon an underground fairy house, and it was the fairies popping out to steal oat cakes all along. Thank you very much. Oh, what a lovely, mischievous tale. It just goes to show that sometimes the answers we are looking for are a lot closer than we expect them to be. If only we look a little closer and follow the clues. That and always check your basement for fairies. And your fireplace, apparently. And maybe your shoes. You do not want a fairy in your shoes. And your pockets. Yes. I'm pretty sure I just saw one pop out your pocket there, Jenny. That's where you have an arrangement. It's fine. (laughs) (laughs) Oh no! (laughs) like a rowey, a buttery. The Aberdeenville started out at sea, but it's made its way onto land and into our heart. And round my waist. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, I'm certain everyone has a favourite taste that makes them think of a lovely wee corner of the world. And for Aberdeen, it has to be the buttery. A roll so salty, it's like it's been swimming in the sea itself. And so fatty, it's like it's been swimming in lard. <laughs> Yet, together, it's wonderfully comforting and a taste of home for many. Yes, shall we sing a wee bothy ballad about the buttery? I mean, yes. (laughs) Can you sing, Annie? (laughs) No, I can't, Annie. (laughs) Shall we get someone in to help us? Uh, yes. Hello. (laughs) Wow, you just travelled so far to get here. (laughs) I travelled from the other room, thanks to this ongoing lockdown that we've got going on. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. Right. So this is a Bothy ballad about butteries, which is... I've always wanted to sing a song about butteries, and I'm so glad to Stories of Scotland for making my dream come true. Anytime, Kyle. Apart from when we're not doing an episode about butteries, in which case, please don't sing about butteries. Let's let's just get through this together, friends. My apologies in advance. The tall ships they go to sea, they fairly brought fashion. They set sail from Belfast to Bonnie Aberdeen. The skipper of the Queen of Scots, we asked him what's his goals. He says, I'm going down to Torrey for a dozen morning rolls. Hey, they're made by family bakers. The shop's just in the road. They're fine to eat and you can't eat beat Aberdeen's morning rolls. You can have them for your breakfast or have them for a snack. You can fit them in your rucksack if you're going out for a wag. You can't eat ban a battery or take a railway for a Scot. And just like a reputation, we will eat those butteries hot. Oh, they're made by family bakers. The shop's just in the road. They're fine to eat and you can't eat beet abardines and morning rolls. Hey! Uh, thank you, Kyle. That was considerably better than having us sing. So thank you very much. <laughs> You're very welcome, chaps. Kyle, you can have a celebratory buttery. I might have a celebratory buttery. Thank yes. you so much, chaps. Thanks for having me. all so much for listening if you have the time why not give us a little review it really really helps us um on whatever platform you listen on and also why not get in touch and let us know what you'd like to hear an episode on uh, we've got a bit more time on our hands to be making episodes these days so fire away thank you so much for listening slangeva slangeva